Welcome to the swing sets. Climb on up. There is always a swing available. On Life on the Swing Set, the podcast, we explore ethically non-monogamous relationships, the pleasures and passions, the promise and pitfalls. We discuss all aspects of ethical non-monogamy in a fun, open, and welcoming fashion with a gleam in our eye, a bounce in our step, our hands down your pants. Ooh, (laughs) sorry, got ahead of myself. We may be biased. In fact, we most certainly are. But we don't sugarcoat and each of us speaks honestly and earnestly about our thoughts, ideas, and experiences throughout our very own Lives on the Swing set. Thanks for swinging by. What is sexy? I'm not going to just sit here waiting for an answer that'll never come due to timey wiminess and the facts that podcasts do not work that way. Tonight, we're exploring our thoughts on sexual attraction, what it means and why we're attracted to others, why others may be attracted to us and how that feels, and perhaps most important of all, what makes us feel sexy. We invite you to tweet along with us using the hashtag SSPodcast. I'm Cooper Beckett, and tonight I'm joined by... Hey everybody, it's Ginger. And I'm the prof. (laughs) And I am Katie Mack. And giggly in the corner is Katie Mack. (laughs) As usual. And giggly. (laughs) Welcome back to the show, prof. (laughs) Can you put me behind Katie Mack? (laughs) It's it's not like his Skype catches up or anything either. It's (laughs) just he's gone. What? what the heck? You guys can't we were, hear me. We were talking. Fi- we were we were enjoying pre-podcasting time. Fine. Then all of a sudden, I feel like he's oh. just fucking with me. <laughs> no, I'm not. Like he's it's actually the sex just workers using my porn connection. No, like his his connection's completely fine. He's just going silent yeah. at random. He's just stopping to fuck in with the you. middle of sentences, <laughs> so I freak out. <laughs> this is why I get more aggro when you're around, prof. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's sexual tension, Coop. Well, we let's know call that. It what it is. You know, and again, uh, let's see, uh, roughly three weeks, Prof, and we can take care of that. You're my David. I'm your Maggie. Maggie? What? What? No, the moonlighting. Is David that just what you want him to call you? <laughs> oh my David God. and Matt, wow. Maddie. <laughs> moonlighting, Maddie. huh? Moonlighting. It was Maddie. <laughs> Yeah, I got it. Sorry. You said Maggie. I'm your Maddie. You you have Remember a name thing. Moonlighting, Moonlighting. Geraldo Herrera. <laughs> yeah, I mean I mean I'm impressed, Prof, um, that you're hoping our audience actually gets a thirty year old reference. <laughs> you know, pe- people people actually forget about Bruce Willis pre Die Hard, I think. Oh no! Like they, oh, that hurts. They pretend oh, that he, he wasn't a thing. Well, let's because talk if about you think about Bruce Willis at that time, about Bruce Willis, you need to think about his song and his Bruno phase. Ah! Uh, and nobody wants to think about that. That's not sexy. <laughs> so Jin, we have that contest, the Marriage 2.0 contest. Why don't you tell our listeners about it? Absolutely. So Magnus Sullivan made this amazing movie with a a vast cast of sex positive, awesome friends of the swing set and other folks. And I would love for our swing setters to see it. And so Magnus gave us some DVDs of Marriage 2.0, this incredible genre bending movie part porn part drama part instructional video on how to all do awesome ethical non-monogamy absolutely and in order to win a copy what we'd love for you to do is email us at marriage at life on the swing set.com and tell us in two to three hundred words your genesis story on how you and a partner or partners in, were introduced to open relationships, ethical non monogamy, however, you found your way into this awesome lifestyle. And we may read some on the air 
are those of us that are on the podcast eligible for winning? <laughs> that's what we asked. Yeah. Last no. Time. No. It, sorry. I you asked that last time. I'm yeah. sorry, to keep. Um, well, everyone well, wants a copy better. of the movie, so it's a good question to ask. It is an excellent yes. question. Perhaps I ask. recommend um, submitting under a, a different name. <laughs> well, Katie, I don't submit at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Then you definitely will not win, bro. <laughs> Submission is win required. To submit, and I will not win. Yes. <laughs> so there you go. But our However, listeners can win. I, no, on they a can. tangent, I, 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 and this is a total tangent, but it it really does irritate me when I have to hit a button on a web form that says submit. <laughs> is that just weird? You are all top, bro. <laughs> I, I am. There's a bit of top. I hope top. that our listeners do not have that same problem and that they can actually submit awesome Genesis stories because Genesis stories are, are fun. And they are. it would be great to have folks that would share them and get an awesome copy of Marriage 2.0. So before we get started, Prof, you've got your own show now. I do. With Jen. Well, it, and Jen, you are Jen, more we, prolific than any podcast I've ever seen, I think. It's like You know why, Coop? Because of Beca- Jen, I think. Well, I mean, this is us capturing what we do all the time. And mm. folks have been awesome in sharing feedback, but we are bringing people along on our adventures. We're bringing people along with all of the places we go, into our bedroom, into our bathtub, and we always chat. So we are now finally capturing some of those awesome discussions and allowing folks to see a little bit about what Gin and Prof do in our spare time. So, so it's like it the Gin and Prof reality show. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to get Jin to allow for the the uh, graphic <laughs> porn version of the reality show. She doesn't want to. She's a little modest. She doesn't like to be recorded while she's having sex. Ah, uh, yes. I believe in all this time, I've only heard that once. Heard w- which what? You in a recorded sexual situation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, some You submitted episode. it. It was on the podcast at one point, it was. wasn't it? And yeah. we didn't... Did we say it was you? No. I didn't think so. Listeners, another podcast scavenger hunt for you. It's a little Easter egg for there you. Is a it was Easter early egg. on. It was. That's all I'll tell you. Yeah. Ha. Oh, we got to revive <laughs> so. that segment. Coming for the swing set. Coming... <laughs> Oh, that was that a good was, segment. Oh, yeah. oh God. Yeah. Is that exactly yeah, what it sounds we, like? It, yeah, it, it was is. it was people submitting their orgasms to win stuff. <laughs> this is this is year one swing set here. We didn't have a lot else going on. I will give you time. a hint. It was one of the longer orgasms that was published. Yes. And it was <laughs> amazing. It, it it was good for me. <laughs> So, Jin, what do you think now that now that you have your own show? <laughs> Are you ready to kick this popsicle stand with the swing set? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, oh, wait, you're, wait, wait. You're trying to poach her? <laughs> this isn't the Jeffersons. You didn't move on up to intellectual foreplay. Moving on up, moving no. up to the... Oh, my gosh. No, we are having fun with the show. It's really great. One of the things that I've been loving, and and I don't want to do this. I mean, I love a good circle jerk, but I don't want to do this too much. But Who I'm doesn't? really loving <laughs> Dylan's show and our show. Are like it, it, it? They're vastly different shows, and so and my that's, show is about a serial killer. So it, exactly, it's very different. Exactly. So there's so there's a lot of diversity in in at least the the way the shows are are set up. But one of the things that I will admit about intellectual foreplay and prof can back me on this because he was basically wrestling with me for for years probably since we started teasing about doing intellectual foreplay and I'm I, I have I struggle sometimes with the couple the couple show because that's mm-hmm. pretty much what we're going to do is be us as prof described it on adventures talking how we often talk and just capturing those discussions and I 
I sometimes found myself in the past feeling like, wow, this, this just isn't this, it, 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 it just wasn't hitting my sweet spot, but I'm hoping that we will hear oh, from no. listeners. Jen, you'll, you'll find yourself in the future feeling that too. Trust me. <laughs> okay. That's fair. <laughs> yeah, so, like, yeah, we're that show. Fill in the blanks. Everybody knows which that show is. Stop it's, it. There's it, no way that's not on purpose. It's actually more exciting. <laughs> See, I, I don't know if the listeners at home will get this experience because his audio is probably fine. <laughs> no, it's fair. He's still talking yeah. and he has no idea. I, um, I love it. It's great. It's fun. It's Dylan, just my do own something little episode with that. right now. Yeah. Dylan, do something. <laughs> oh, boy. So, bottom line is, I will just say, I am loving the interactions with listeners so far. And that has been one of the things that's always been fun for me about the swing set. And I'm really loving that we're able to address questions and comments that listeners have that Prof and I can address in the ways that we can address them because it's two, it's two sides of a relationship. And that has that in and of itself is a unique perspective. So we're having a good time. And you should check it out, intellectualforeplay.com and swingset.fm. Highly recommend. And not just because I know them. I'd recommend it otherwise. Aww. Uh. So, so I think that podcast is sexy. What else do we think is sexy, sexies? It's an interesting question, isn't it? It is. And it's one of those sort of hard-to-boil-down ones. I think Katie is sitting there hoping I don't call on her. I mean, you don't know. (laughs) You're right. I don't know that. But I think so. Um, It's when when I, we, uh, she and I were talking before podcasting because we had to change topics last minute and we were uh, spitballing this topic. And then I was thinking about what it is that I find sexy and the definition has expanded so dramatically since opening up and since non-monogamy, um, simply because I think when you're when you're non-monogamous and you're actually having sexual experiences with a wide variety of people, um, you're no longer focusing your sexual type. I think. Because I think monogamy often makes us want to focus our sexual type on the type of sex we will be getting and then outlet it through (laughs) porn. And elaborate fantasy life. The the idea of... So the idea of a type is really interesting because in my mind the idea of having a type toward toward which you are attracted speaks to me in some ways and maybe this is illogical that you have to have a type you get one choice so so you need to sure. find a lane and you need to drive in it and you don't get to use your directional you do not get to pass you you just you get in your lane and drive and i just it's interesting from the buy or pan perspective that i don't relate to the idea of having to stay in a lane which may be why i don't I don't, and Prof can speak to this, I don't feel like I have a type, quote unquote. Mm. Like I have lots of attractions and I enjoy, I enjoy lots of different kinds of bodies. I enjoy lots of different, you know, complexions and hair color and, and intellect and like you just it'd be really tough to pin me down if you looked at the people to whom I'm attracted and well, first of all it's not tough to pin you down because well, you're very prof, I was so. actually waiting for you to say that <laughs> thank you okay. the moment you I'm said it, I, I knew. happy to be predictable yes. um, <laughs> I know she, you too she, well she prof. does have a type but 
but I appreciate the idea of being attracted <laughs> to a lot of different kinds of people. Interestingly, I would say that when I go to remembering what it was like to be early into non-monogamy, I would say I had a type. It was mm. like, in, in, in many ways, I think it was, I mean, Ginger is super sexual, super, I mean, we've all met her, right? Like she is the hottest thing that you could imagine. Oh my gosh, stop it. And even <laughs> considering that, I was like, hey, there's this other kind of person that I think is really super sexy. And it was Nordic blonde women for me. Like that was like, my gosh, that is so awesome. And then I realized after a period of time, well, that's not really a type. Like when you can have all of those other things that Ginger mentioned in terms of people who are very intellectual or people who are shapely or people who have all of these other fun kinks, then they can be blonde or not. That's so much less of an issue. So I felt like, and I don't know if you were saying that around when you're boxed in from a mindset of I have to choose and I choose my partner. And then if I had to choose somebody else, I would choose this, um, Oh, I can't, I was going to throw down the name of a celebrity, but I don't even know who that would be. Um, Angelina Jolie, you, everyone's still attracted to her, Thank right? you. She yeah. hasn't fallen She's out of She's not necessarily favor. Nordic and blonde, but that's cool. Thanks. Um, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> mm. Oh, okay. Um, if you can't, you know, if you can't be with your partner, if I can't be with Ginger, okay, Scarlett Johansson, I'll, I'll settle for you. It's just not like that. And I think that that's what's awesome about being able to have that kind of experience with your partner in a supportive environment is sexy becomes something that is much more panoramic. Okay, so let's, let's play a game. Let's play a game. Mm. You're at a party full of a wide variety of people. Katie, you are not expected to talk to anybody. Thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> if, if you like, they can't even see you. Okay. And yes. it's, it's full of, a, of an infinite variety of people. What type of things, what indicators stand out to you that would say, that's a sexy person, I'm going to go in for a closer look? Ooh. Who I mean, wants we, to go first? Are we talking aesthetically or are we just leaving it open? I, I'm asking for sexy <laughs> indicators, whatever those mean to you. So is this round robin or are we going to all take our turn to talk? Uh, uh, let's round robin this bitch. All right. So like <laughs> say your piece, move on. Whoever's next in the circle, say their thing. Yeah. And we'll just go into it. If we were in person, we'd have the talking dildo. Okay, thank you. That see that helps. Okay. Well, I have my dick in my hand, so so you're halfway first? there. So <laughs> why don't you go first? So do I. I. <laughs> no, I actually want to you hear. Have I want to hear what Katie Mac has to say. I said you have mine. I said I have mine. Oh, very nice. Katie Mac, put my dick in your hand, and you go. <laughs> then I had my dick. Okay, so <laughs> well, you have two hands. You have two Katie. hands, so you've got a dick in each hand, oh, which means you really get to talk. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for being so fucking helpful, both of you. Um, the first thing that is likely to draw me to a person is seeing them being very actively engaged. Um, there's something about. Somebody who's actually like looking at the people that they're talking to or like seem to be like genuinely enjoying that interaction. That makes me look at them for a second longer. Interesting. Ooh. For me, the number one thing that is likely to pull me into a, uh, hey, I want to see that closer look is hair related. Ooh. And it's not necessarily color. It's more stylistic. I'm a big fan of somewhat away from the norm hair. I'm trying to really find the way to say this. Mm -hmm. um, 
like I like hair that's dyed interestingly. I like hair that's shorter than uh, you might expect. I like hair that's really long. I like hair that's really curly, like River Song. Boom. Yeah, that's it. And it's it's uh, you know I like the people who. Uh, who are actually very irritated with their hair and are the kind of people when people say, I love your hair, they say, Oh, you're welcome to it. <laughs> I find that most of the hair I like is along those lines. Hmm. That's interesting. Like I love the really big curly hair and, and they usually say, yeah, I wish it was straight. It's like, well, I'm, I like, I like what it is. Sure. Huh. So hair, yeah, probably the number one indicator for me. Okay. Huh. I would say I have... Uh, 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 oh, gosh, even saying this out loud, Prof, you really... Y your presence is felt right now as I'm saying this. Just pretend uh, I'm not here. Pretend I'm not here. Before so, you were so, cutting out, she could just pretend you were gone in the end. Exactly, exactly. Because <laughs> I literally, literally wasn't here. here. That's true. <laughs> I tend to, oh, this is, I'm going to just say it this way because whatever, like, whatever, I'm good. <laughs> I tend to, when it comes to men for me, because I have a whole different, so I'll, I'll, it's easier for me to say like, I'm, I can get really wicked attracted to uh, Andro, a woman who's got this super Andro vibe like mm. that, that I'm drawn to that immediately, mm -hmm. but that's more of a vibe. That's not necessarily an aesthetic. It can be, uh, it can be attached to an aesthetic, but it doesn't have to be. And that's usually a more subtle attraction. But when it comes to, being attracted to men in like a big, big experience, like a party or whatever, I tend to look at the men who think that no one's going to approach them because they are like larger than life, like filling the room, like think mm. there's no way any woman would just walk up to me and say something. I don't know, mm -hmm. whatever I say. And I, I'm so going to approach him, not necessarily because I'm attracted to him because I want to fuck him, but I'm attracted to him because you want to prove him wrong. Oh, no, no. It's really <laughs> not meant to be. <laughs> well, maybe a little. It, it's not truly meant to be like a gotcha. It's more meant to be like I like if you've got game to banter then let's do this. So, because I'm always a big fan of the flirt just for the flirt's sake. So my initial attraction isn't necessarily a sexual, I want to, I want to rock your world in a sexual way. It's more, Hey, let's see. I want to feel you, feel out your game. And, and we may or may not find that there's a deeper attraction, but there's this, like, I want to banter. I want to, I want to play. Yes. I want to, does that make sense? Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm like getting excited about how much sense it makes. <laughs> okay. So tell me, tell me, tell me. I'm interested in that. But, but then I also want to hear Prof's type too. No, well, we, or his attraction. I, mean, I think Prof's already got the talking dick, so he can, he can take this one. It's his turn. <laughs> no, he gave it to you. Remember? <laughs> uh, she, my, <laughs> actually still, she still has my dick in her hand. I'm, I'm just waiting to like, Finish. <laughs> um, no, I, 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 I'm not surprised by that. And I am interested in Katie Mack's opinion um, because the banter that Ginger does is pretty fun to watch. Um, so sometimes I'm in her wake as it relates to that banter, which is awesome. I'm happy to be, you know, a supporting actor. I think when I... Uh, when I reflect on the folks that really pique my interest, it is, um, it, it's, I think the first thing that strikes me is, is posture, you know, kind of how people hold themselves and, you know, having a sense of presence and 
Most of the time, I would say it's not necessarily the people that Ginger has described in terms of the the guys that you know the or, or women in this case, but the the people that might be um, commanding all of the attention. It might be po- folks that are kind of on the periphery, but they have a grace or a presence to how they um, conduct themselves, and they're smiling and engaged, but not maybe not necessarily the ones that are cracking all the jokes or being overly exuberant or having kind of, uh, um, you know, being at the center of the attention, so to speak. So, yeah, I, I look at the periphery and it's interesting how women are able to just hold themselves when they don't think people are looking. And that that's very attractive to me as it relates to, just having a presence and a grace of of um, just their natural state of being. Ooh, all good. <laughs> and all different. Which means a lot of the people at this hypothetical party are very sexy. And are we back to calculating probabilities? Between the four of us, <laughs> we've got it decently covered. Uh, uh, I, yeah. Yeah, Katie, I would love to hear your thoughts on gingers. Cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought I thought cool. we were going to break. Boy, that, that was, was totally... that was such the the introvert right there. Cool. cool. <laughs> that is not what I sound like. Um. <laughs> no, that was that was more the context uh, that we read into it. The. It's not no, it actually was, what you said. It was just more surprised. I thought we were going to break, so I was ready for that. So I did that thing where I was hearing you say that, but then it you took were... me a second to realize that that <laughs> wasn't actually what you were saying. So You were already looking at porn. <laughs> She's you know, like, oh, it's break time. Yeah. I don't know what you porn. think you know about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my thoughts on gingers are the banter is the best thing, like, ever. It's just my favorite. Like on the seventh day, the flying spaghetti monster created the banter for me and for my enjoyment. Um, So I I am drawn to that. I'm drawn to people who are already bantering. I feel like putting like my quarters on the pool table for next round. That's awesome. I like people who can hold the space and hold the room. And that makes me feel a little bit more like they'll be able to hold what I bring. Because for this whole last hour that we spent talking about what like a nervous little introvert I am, my individual flirtation style is very fucking cocky. It's very in your face. It's very Mm. like, you know, it's very what the fuck do you think you know? So I am drawn to and enjoy people who can, one, handle that and not think I'm just being a cunt for cunt's sake – and two, actually be able to engage and respond and keep me on my toes in return. So if I get a vibe that somebody can do that, they're like, you know, I might give them the people's eyebrow. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to go to a break. <laughs> oh, come on. How can you go to break well, after we're coming that? coming back. It's oh, just God. a break, Prof. Oh, oh, this is not the, this isn't the break to be No, a break. it's a break if you need to go stroke one off because you clearly were turned on by all that. It's not one break to break them all. No, just, just a regular one. Break. Hey all, Cooper here to tell you the exciting news that my best-selling book, My Life on the Swing Set, Adventures in Swinging and Polyamory, is now available on Audible. As you may know, if you sign up for Audible now, you can get your first month and first audiobook free. So why not make it mine? Go to audible.mylotss.com and get eight hours of newly produced audio content now. If you crave other methods of book consumption, you can purchase the DRM free ebook or paperback, as well as the audiobook direct from me at mylifeontheswingset.com. You know you'd rather hear than read about my epic prostate orgasm. Why not do it now? When it comes to online dating, we here at The Swing Set believe that Cassidy is the best one out there. It looks great, it's intuitive and easy to use, and it's simply full of potential sexy friends. 
Still the fastest growing online swinger dating site in the world, Cassidy has been our go-to site for the last three years. If you sign up using our link at lifeontheswingset.com slash K-A-S-I-D-I-E, you'll get some free time to explore the site. And you can decide for yourself if Cassidy is the site for you. Hope to see you there at Cassidy.com. I will be fascinated to listen to this podcast. <laughs> right? I can't wait. <laughs> so, so, Prof, yeah, you are just randomly just completely vanishing in the middle of class. Oh I'm out. I, I am so sorry. Um, <laughs> Fucking Kansas. Can I, um, hold on. Maybe. Can you use your phone as the... Wi-Fi. I think I might hook up to my phone as a Wi-Fi. Yeah. What I just said was awesome. Just, I just want <laughs> well, to say right now. It'll be in the podcast. That's why I'm very excited to listen. <laughs> I know, seriously. Because you very... recorded it. It, it. No, it's recorded. It is great. Hold on. <laughs> All right, you guys figure it out. I'm just going to keep looking at Tumblr porn. <laughs> The, the one I just posted is very interesting. Oh no! Oh no! No! Ow! Oh. I I think you two might be misinterpreting it. <laughs> hey, how's yeah, this? Yeah, but <laughs> I know, but you it's still. You sound okay. So. Yeah. This is my iPhone. This is my um, oh. good old fashioned LTE connection. Is that better? Yeah. Seems better. Well, so yeah. far, let's. I mean, let's keep rolling and see what happens i just want to say i have this experience all the time because you know i travel a lot and there are some dirty motherfuckers who are in hotels surfing porn eating up all the wi-fi bandwidth and it just yeah. pisses me off because i'm just trying to live a wholesome life because you're just trying to watch your porn well it's and it's it is kind of porn o'clock i mean really it's in about porn o'clock right yeah. now in a hotel room absolutely in the midwest oh yeah Oh, exactly. yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm, I'm living my porn right now, and they're all watching this shit, and they're eating out my bandwidth, and it's pissing me off. <sighs> you should go knock on doors. Excuse me, are you watching porn? <laughs> Turn the porn. Get it off. Get done. Be done. Yeah, it's Can off we just, the like, lube. Take a right. porn break, maybe? Like, you go back to your porn in like an hour, hour and a half. If you've got things to do. Porn recess. Can we... Can I just hand out ten tanga eggs and be like here? Ah, I think I think that is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> there should be a tanga egg of the month club. <laughs> they could just put it next to the Gideon Bible, actually. Yeah. Can we just, <laughs> as it relates to, because uh, I know we're talking about sexy on this podcast. Can something that looks like an egg be so sexy and feel so fucking good? Like seriously? No, well, those are two separate things. <laughs> How so? Do tell. I mean, being sexy and feeling good, I'm just saying that we're using them inclusively, but they're totally different. The egg can feel fantastic, but not actually be a sexy thing. Wait, it's kind of Unless it can't. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> no, I, mean, I, I hear you. It can, I was judging myself there for a minute because it actually is kind of sexy, but it is totally separate, too. I agree with you. Well, I, it's what I, I imagine when yeah. Twitter users don't have a profile picture and it's just the egg, I imagine that they're all Tenga eggs. Yeah, I do too. So they, they're oh. you know the part of this podcast when you guys couldn't actually hear me talking was kind of fun because I just got to talk and you guys were all like, "What's he saying?" <laughs> did you just think that we were all being really attentive? <laughs> I actually did, Katie. Matt. No, I was like, "Wow, <laughs> that's not what happened." Yeah, okay, <laughs> not at all. We at The Swing Set believe that being risk-aware and practicing safer sex makes our lifestyle exponentially better. With that in mind, we're partnering with Lucky Bloke, global condom experts and the best online source for condoms and lube to say no to mediocre condoms and bring the most pleasurable, safer sex directly to our listeners. Go to swingsetcondoms.com to see a specially curated selection of condoms, lubes, and assortments to reintroduce variety and excitement into the protection portion of your playtime. You should especially take note of the deluxe sampler put together by us at the Swing Set for your party and date night kit. Making your condom purchase here supports both us at the Swing Set and the wonderful purveyors of safer sex, the lucky bloke. Swingsetcondoms.com 
it's Prof. I'm here with Ginger, and we have some big news to share, Ginger. We do. We're going to Desire <laughs> again. Yes, we are. April 2016, from the 16th through the 21st, we are going to do a five-day bit of awesomeness. Absolutely. It's a hold me over. If you can't make it in November, we'd love to host you in April with JV and Shara from Ending the Sexual Dark Age. And we're going to have a chill time. Not quite as many activities as our normal November trip, but still lots of awesome desire fun for sure. So, Ginger, how do people get on this awesome trip with us? They should definitely email me at ginger at lifeontheswingset.com and we'll get you in touch with Jim from Shar Travel. We'd love to see you there. Join us. Yay, do it. And we're back. <laughs> Heavenly. It's going to totally fuck with Dylan. <laughs> he, he's now touring Upper Mongolia. Or is he? Or is he? Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. Do you survive the break, Prof? I, I'm, I'm looking for... Are you post-orgasmic, Prof? That was quick. It was good for me. Um, Were you working it extra hard during the break, Katie? <laughs> well, that's fair. I can assure you I did absolutely no work. <laughs> it was all pleasure. I can assure you that Ginger's hand jobs are worse than everybody else's. So, Katie, you're doing a great job. <laughs> yes, we, we have all heard we tell this, of Ginger the legend bad of Ginger's hand jobs. terrible hand jobs. <sighs> oh, boy. I can't deny that. So could yes, we, Prof. Show some leadership here. Where, where are we going from here? <laughs> ah, okay. I thought you didn't submit. Well, I do. He doesn't. I'm. <laughs> it's sort of my default, Katie. <laughs> no, I was talking to Prof. He's looking to. No, never mind. I, oh, he's I, looking to me for leadership. I <laughs> see. So by implication, he would he would be saying that I am somehow above him in this situation. I'm just saying that Prof needed you to tell him what to do. He did need me to tell him <laughs> what to do. That's an interesting point, Katie. Thank you for sharing it. You're welcome. <laughs> Although I was directing him to do it, so it's oh, not yeah, really sure, that. Yeah, but that's sure. okay. Yeah, let's, yeah. Let's, we're moving on. Fine, top from the bottom, by all means. It is it, it is his show. <laughs> and if Dylan doesn't hate us now, all of the listeners hate us. So we can just continue to talk amongst ourselves. And if there are any Swing Set listeners after this episode, it'll be a miracle. I think they would have left us uh, during the great religious and <laughs> re- Republican debates, Prof. I don't, there are many I don't other think reasons. this is going to be the straw. <laughs> proverbial or not so i'm interested so i'm interested um well i am interested in all of your opinions but when you've had that initial attraction Mm -hmm. and um you know from a sexy standpoint there's a feeling of connection um what takes it to the next level for for y'all like what makes it really connect where you're like scruff of the neck like let's do this kind of thing unsurprisingly when the physical or accessories because i'm also a glasses guy attract me it is the um interesting things or funny things or unique things she says that take me to the yeah let's do this it's all about the conversation then what are the unique things? Mm. Well, I don't know. These are hypothetical people. <laughs> okay. Draw from your vast experience <laughs> of unique things that sexy people have said to you. Honestly, I'm really attracted to very sexy dorks. Okay. I'm thinking of one in particular. Uh, I hope she doesn't mind being called a dork, but it was last year at Desire uh, where I got to see the true depths of really, really gorgeous, sexy, 
incredibly, incredibly geeky at the same time. She wore TARDIS pasties at one point. It was that's a thing. It was perfection. Were her nipples bigger? Under, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I remember you in during the episode because we were recording when she walked up, and you 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 literally went TARDIS pasties, TARDIS pasties. I, Tur- there, was, like you, there was no way I could just maintain. I mean, really, no, no. Was, why would that you? Was it. And, when the when the sexy and the geeky collide. I lose all um, sense of time and space, really. It's fair. I go (laughs) wibbly-wobbly. As one does. So that's awesome. So that's like a next level... That's next level for you. Well, like, yeah, and it's it's the same thing going the other way. You know, someone can be really, really fucking sexy and totally my proverbial type, even though that type varies widely from day to day and, and situation to situation. But based on what they have to say when I'm talking to them or based on how they interact with other people, it can very easily turn into a, yeah, I was interested, mm. but mm. fuck no. Yeah. Mm. So what? Where where does that happen? Like what happens to make it a uh, mean, stupid? Oh, like mm. legitimate stupid, not just saying something foolish. Because <laughs> look who they're talking to. <laughs> um, sure. Really, really full of themselves is unattractive. Um. Um. Yeah. So for me, the, the, the partner piece comes into this because what is, the, I can think of very specific times that I've been really into somebody and then their partner comes along and their partner is maybe pushy or dickish or some ways in it, in it like, it fouls the whole thing up in a way because the relationship piece, at least as it relates to our, our functioning within ethical non-monogamy, the relationship piece does mean something. Uh, you know, are they in a good relationship or are they both mm-hmm. into this? Is it, you know, one person's fantasy and somebody's just along for the ride. And so, um, meeting the partners do, can and has for me, really soured things yeah how about you katie uh for which the fuck yes or the fuck no both the fuck yes. <laughs> but fuck yes first okay what takes it from you know ooh, who are you to a fuck yes for a th- yeah and i'm writing i'm i'm, I'm taking notes by the way <laughs> should, just I, so you should know. I speak more slowly should I- <laughs> Okay. Please do. <laughs> Use small words too. <laughs> I like being surprised. That's the biggest thing. Like it, you can catch my interest, but the best way to keep it is to surprise me. And that's an easy blanket statement across all. Like I don't have an aesthetic type either. I don't have one type of person that I'm attracted to, but being able to surprise me in any sense, whether that's, you know, some like, a game banter, whether that's, I don't know, I've been surprised by people, you know, not being intimidated by me because some people, you know, can't hang. <laughs> you, I, I know you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, mm-hmm. So being, all of that, being able to hang, being able to surprise me, taking what feels like a strong interest in me as a person helps, you know, like we can flirt, we can banter, that's fine. But if I feel like you're actually trying to get to know me underneath that, it's a much easier like, oh, wait a second. You know, that stuff will catch my interest in a much more serious way. Um. <laughs> would, would you be surprised to know that I'm an astronaut? <laughs> I would. Astronaut Mike Dexter? <laughs> Ginger, you're surprised to know that uh-huh. I'm an astronaut? Shh. 
Where do you think well, he's you, been? He on. is podcasting from space. That's he why his connection is so terrible. That's why the Wi-Fi <laughs> sucks, apparently. Do you think it's easy to get a good Wi-Fi connection up here, people? <laughs> God, I'm sorry. There's a Uranus joke that no one else is making. That's, That's fair. That's totally begging, fair. <laughs> begging to be made. <laughs> and it's an exceptionally geeky podcast when it talks about the fact that there could be a Uranus joke, but nobody's <laughs> making it. <laughs> no, I just wanted no. to point out. True. So everybody gets to think of their own Uranus joke in their head. <laughs> Katie, what's your fuck no? no. What's your fuck no? <laughs> so Prof can cross those things off his to-do list. They are, honestly, Coop, they're similar to yours. If you're excessively mean, like it's mm. one thing to bust somebody's balls. I'm totally on board there. But if I feel like you're actually a mean person, that's a pretty easy fuck no. Um if I don't get the sense that like you are good with boundaries or you know, just all of those initial like, wait a second, I don't actually think you're a decent person anymore. That's really it. The biggest way to become a fuck no for me is just to not be a decent person. That's the mm -hmm. easiest, quickest fuck no. Um, the fuck yeses are are easier to come by in people but harder to identify now that we're talking about them because really once i'm intrigued or engaged with someone anything about them could become something that makes them sexier that i wouldn't have been able to think of you know i might not say like okay well this is the type of hair that i like on a partner but if i find you and your personality sexy and we're engaging i might find that part of you to be the sexiest thing I've ever seen, even if it's not something that I usually think about or go for in people. Hmm. Does that make sense? Well, that's one of the things uh, along those lines, Katie, that most surprised me about non-monogamy is the variety that was available suddenly started surprising me over and over and what, uh, what and whom I was attracted to. Mm-hmm. And I found also surprising uh, turnoffs along mm. those lines. Sure. Yeah, Ginger. Ginger. Fuck yes, fuck, fuck no. Yes, fuck oh, no. oh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, she was just enjoying a nice podcast here, and now she I has know, to say I stuff. I really was. I, I, I really was. Um, so... Fuck yes are, hmm, fuck yeses are <laughs> respectfulness, hmm. fuck yeses are good listeners, um, fuck yeses are awesome eye contact, and, um, good kissers. Oh, sorry. Did, I'm already kissing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes, we're we're before that line. Oh, you, damn it. You've, okay. You've well, jumped over the line. Damn it. Okay. Um, fuck yeses are people who will gush about their partners, like their, the, the folks that they came with yes. there to whatever it is. Those people are so fuck yeses. Um, uh, people who are not in a place of judging their own desires. Mm. So if you're telling me about your, your, um, your, oh fuck, what was it? Your snuggy or your <laughs> slanket or whatever the, whatever it's oh, called. Oh yeah. Right. The, the forever lazy, <laughs> forever lazy. I completely so, forgot about that, Jen. Yes. So, so for our listeners at home, the Forever Lazy is basically adult footy pajamas with zippers in the right places. And I find that incredibly, incredibly sexy. So if you're telling me that as we're having this conversation about desires and you're willing to go that vulnerable with me, that's a fuck yes. Because I'm like, I may not be into the Forever Lazy, but the <laughs> idea that you're willing to tell me that you're into that is really hot for me. Um, eh, there's probably more, but I'm going to go to the fuck no's so not to filibuster. Um, fuck no's are people who... Will the senator yield? <laughs> she will not yield. She will not. 
I only filibuster for certain reasons. Um, fuck knows. Yeah, people who... I'll filibust her. I see what you did there. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Thanks. Kate. Oh my gosh, I hear a slow clap. <laughs> I feel like that's Dylan from Mongolia slow clapping. It may be. I don't even know. from Mongolia sounds like a clothing That's line. That's the slow cast special Dylan effect. from Mongolia. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Um, I agree about the clothing line. I'm not quite sure if I'd want to wear it, but okay. Um, people disrespectful of their partners. Totally a fuck no. Um, people who... Um, oh, gosh. People who are handsy without consent it's Mm. it's it's pretty much a fuck no like not even in that moment like i will shut you down like please don't squeeze my ass squeeze my breast squeeze my like whatever honk my nose whatever i don't even care like (laughs) (laughs) i mean honk your nose i mean that's Dylan, That's... when you edit this all together, I'm just going to put in a request here for, if, like, could you insert, like, a bike horn? Yeah, bike horn, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So I'm the only one here who's had their nose honked unconsensually. I'm just asking. I don't or know non- that I've ever had non- my nose yes. honked that's been consensual. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't think that happens to men as much. <laughs> I'm gonna honk your nose the next time I see you. Well, that's I fine, so... and it would probably be appreciated. But I just don't think it. I in general, I think okay, it probably wait, wait, wait. happens less. Let me back this up. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. No, a... I believe you. No, 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 no. I'm not backing it all the way up. I, it, <laughs> word choice. There was word choice. First of all, it's not unconsensual. It's non-consensual. That was annoying. Secondly. <laughs> I'm correcting my own grammar. Secondly, maybe it wasn't a nose honk. It was more of a tweak or a, a nose. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, that that we're doing the cute thing. Yeah. The, okay, like, oh, it. look at you. Aren't you? No. No, I'm not. And now you're not. And now fist bump, high five, moving on. No. Like, <laughs> like don't, don't do that. Like, I don't know. Like it still feels very condescending. So that's, I'm going to, that's like kind of my last fuck no, because I'm not trying to filibuster is if, if I feel a sense of condescension, like somehow someone's in that space, I just, it's, I'm not even trying to think about it. It just happens where I'm like, I can't. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm no longer attracted to you. You've, you've totally used up any possible attraction I've had for you by, you know, calling me little lady or tweaking my nose or. Mm -hmm. So really you have to stay out of the heartland of America. (laughs) Oh, geez. Yeah. So basically if someone's trying to fuck you, they shouldn't infantilize you in the process. They shouldn't. (laughs) And probably shouldn't tip their hat at you. No, no. That's that's going to be accompanied by a little lady. How are you doing tonight? I mean, you are you John cute. Wayne? Wow. Yeah, well, you know, I mean. Well, that's gonna... okay because, yeah. You on board with John Wayne? Sorry, I'm catching up because I'm 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 googling infantilize right now because that was an awesome <laughs> word. Why would you? Oh boy. Yeah. I don't I don't know that you're going to get what you're looking for out of that, Prof. Yeah, you may you may you, you may, may not. find a whole lot of male adult babies. Oh, there you go. Wait. Wait. I'm actually searching for infantilize images. No, no, no. Shh. no. So Never wait. type a random thing in and hit image search. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to grab the steering wheel back here. Ginger, All right. I completely am on board with condescension being an immediate fuck no. Okay, good. And for me, it doesn't just – that condescension doesn't just come through with like the little I – I, I have never come across this, this type of dapper fellow – that you seem to be running into. <laughs> that's not been a problem for me. I think um, the condescension that I've experienced has been more, you know, because I do like to banter and because I do like to get kind of cocky in my in my flirting with people, that every once in a while you get someone who just doesn't know where that line is between mm-hmm. bantering back and forth or just being a dick. Hmm. Yeah. Being a dick is not sexy. Mm. And it is a funnily, funnily, it is an interestingly fine line there. Mm-hmm. No, it really, really is. And, 
you know, it's a difficult line to always be aware of, but not being aware of it is going to be a really, really quick fuck now. Yeah. So my next question. So when. Go oh, ahead, Prof. I was going to oh, question you. Go. He's going to yield. No, 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 no. After you. Well, Prof, is your question related to the current question or are you ready to move on with another question? Is it new business? I was moving on, actually. Well, so am I. <laughs> Perfect. So what's what's it's what's your the show. new business? You go, Coop. Well, my next question is, it's it's sort of uh, two parts. What does it feel like to you when somebody talks about how much they find you attractive? Mm. <sighs> mm. And. <laughs> I, I'm getting a strong sense from Katie. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hold, and I'm not going to put her on the spot because I, I'm getting a strong sense there. But I'm very curious for the two very confident people on this podcast, as as there are two of them. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is it like for you to hear that somebody really is? so fucking attracted to you you know that what what does that feel like do you still have that i'm not going to keep talking go either of you i'd love to hear prof's response so what happens when ladies are fawning over you and they're like oh my god you're so hot and your body's so sexy and you dance so well and i don't don't Maybe they do it in that voice or not. But <laughs> yeah, do they do it in that voice? Because I, I don't think know. that would irritate uh, him. That was that was me yelling over the disco music. Uh-uh. But not really. Where do you guys go? <laughs> Lots of places where there's loud music. Oh, d- don't worry, Katie. Disco. We're, we're going to take you to Desire. Disco music. <laughs> well, I know. Yes, I'm, uh, yes, yes yeah. we are. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I... I feel like there is a fine line to to come back to that theme around are people really genuine relative to being interested do they really want to know the real me <laughs> or are they just into me for my body Why are you laughing at me, Ginger? Because I I picture you doing no, your I mean, your drama tears, which know, you I'm are being, so I, good I need at. to I'm pick being, my I'm eyes up off dramatic. the floor because they he- rolled so hard. <laughs> no, I I I shouldn't mock. I mean, the, my point is, I think that there are um, <sighs> there are folks that are very superficial. And it's very clear when somebody is coming on to me if it just feels like it's a very bright line if it's very superficial and it has to do with whatever physical attributes I have or whatever they perceive you know I'm, I'm kind of capable of doing what Cooper has told them I'm capable of doing. Let me just say I, that. I do. Uh, I am like a, uh, an audible fluffer. Like I, you I do. Get, you raise his I, stock. It, it, you it's raise his stock. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not Straight complaining up. at all. Okay, yeah. But, you know, the, the, that's very different than somebody who has an um, in, in, um, a involuntary squeal or a happy, like, hey, this is really awesome. I get to, to know you or chat with you kind of um, sexy vibe. So uh, it, it, it's genuineness. And I think that when you are getting hit on, um, at least when I've been approached and, 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 and women have um, uh, expressed an interest in me, it, it's as much about feeling whether that's real, whether it feels genuine and whether that person is, um, or, or whether they're just kind of like, you know, whether it feels more superficial. I know that's, that sounds so dorky. I'm really sorry. No, no, no. I, I get what you're saying. And, and my experience with that is, you know, when, when I'm in that place, I feel like, so if someone's sharing their attraction to me, I don't, 
I don't know if this is hitting on what you're trying to hit on, Prof, but it's the idea of there's a very bright line between the people who are sincere and the people who are either, you know, how you doing? You know what I mean? It's like mm, that's yeah. that's not like there's well, a if it very feels very gameish. If it feels very pickup artist, to, I mean, if it feels very superficial. It's just not as interesting at all. And I think that... Exactly. Uh, well, one of the things that in this kind of, you know, this is the give energy or take energy, but um, there are a lot of situations with within the community and thinking about being at parties or thinking about being in desire or wherever, where it's almost like the person that's the largest of life, you know, getting the most attraction or, you know, really trying to attract all these folks where you, where, where they're the ones that are getting all the attention. And that attention isn't always genuine. I mean, it's not heartfelt is maybe too strong of a word, but it just doesn't have that level of sincerity behind it. So yeah, I love getting attention when folks are interested in, understanding and chatting and, and flirting in a real cool and genuine way. But if it's just very superficial, then yeah, you know, well, and the last thing I'll say, yeah. And the last thing I'll say about that is I feel like there's, and, and I'll use this word again, like the idea of vulnerability when someone is, is declaring their attraction to you. And, and I also use the word generosity, I'm very forward with people about feeling an attraction to them. And I will actually say it that way. I'm like, I'm just so attracted to you. And I mean it in the big way, like not in the, I want to do you right now sort of way, although that can factor in, but you know, it's like, you're really attractive to me. I love your energy. I love your smile. I love your eyes. I love it. You know, whatever. There's a vulnerability to putting that out there. And I feel like that's what I feel when, or don't feel when someone is declaring their quote unquote attraction for me. There are some people who say it in a way and it's kind of that, like you can feel their vulnerability. Like I'm putting something out there that is a risk. And then there are other people who are putting something out there that they're not risking anything because it's just like you said, yeah. superficial or a lot. That's a great way to describe it. Yeah. And yeah, so, yeah. Like, like they're not really invested. Exactly. So it has like this, you know, player kind of, Oh yeah. You know, like, if you're not into me, I'm just going to move on to somebody else kind of feel. Exactly. True. So, right. yeah. How um, about you guys? What makes a big difference for me in how I respond and what I feel has a lot to do with if I feel any element of, of expectation of what's to come now that they've said that. Oh. Mm. You know, I've, had, I've had both experiences. Like I've had people tell me that they were attracted to me in more – you know, more eloquent or more crass ways. And I've felt that and they like, you know, all right, so, so what now? And I'm like, you, you gave me information. Um, thank you. You know? Right. And I've also had experiences where somebody has told me that they were attracted to me or told me something specific that they were attracted to. And I really felt like they were just telling me in the way that I would tell someone, I like your shoes. And so that's the first thing. If I feel like there's an element of expectation of a response or an action resulting from it, then it's immediately I tense up and want to know how to get out of there quickly. Um, but sometimes it's hard to hear. I mean, I know Coop and I are, you know, not. We're on the, the other side of the fence. We are not the two confident people on the podcast <laughs> oh, right now. Boy. So I'm just, I'm, well, you know, I never know how to respond. I don't know what the fuck to say. A thank you always comes out seeming weird and awkward. Like, I, I don't fucking – should I be saying more than just thank you? Am I supposed to be like, ah, you're sexy too? I don't know. I never know. I don't know what to say. I freeze. I don't know if they're being genuine or not. I don't know what they're fucking angling at or not. I have a very hard time just hearing and receiving that someone else has interacted or or looked at me or in some way and then thought this thing. So, and Katie, then... can I ask you a question about that? Maybe. Is that idea <laughs> – I just did. So is that idea that you don't know how to respond because um, – you mentioned earlier about feeling 
how you like to spar verbally and how you like to have that level of, of play. And so when shit gets real and they're like, I'm into you, are you like, wait a minute, are they fucking, are you, are you, are you still fucking with me? Or, you know, is this part of that sparring thing or did shit yeah, just no, get it's serious? against the rules. That's not spar. Like, that's like the most disarming thing that you could do. <laughs> You know, honesty is, is disarming. I didn't say like honesty is you... disarming. I said that that specific type of honesty in that interaction is incredibly disarming. If I'm just going back and forth, like busting your balls and all of a sudden, like, you know, so how so, does it work for you in terms of the transition then? Like, how does somebody who has had this awesome interaction with you and you've been verbally sparring, how do you make the shift into, hey, let's, you know, let's talk about where we want to take this and how we want to be together and what that would be like for you and how that would work for you. How do you, how does that work? <sighs> you know, it doesn't most of the time. <laughs> You know, there isn't always this. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Hear me out. Hear me out. There isn't <laughs> always this entirely like clear cut. Like, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. All of that, you know, might not always be there. Maybe sometimes you spar with somebody and have this really, really great time and then just like go make out in a corner because you just did. Yeah. So I don't know. There's and, and not always getting such to the a making. And mm. getting to the making out piece is just like you just stop sparring at some point and you just lock lips and go at it? Or is there a sometimes yeah transition? I guess that's what I'm questioning. You know, is there a transition in some way where you're like, oh, all right, that was fun. That worked. It was the fuck yes. And then there's a transition. And what's that look like? The transition sometimes usually takes place, you know, you can't just stop sparring and transition. That's the, in the times that that has happened successfully with me, with people, there's been some sustained flirting, some banter, some all of that. And then the banter kind of ends. And then there's... It comes down a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. That energy tends to peak and then taper off like, you know, like a conversation about something would or like sex itself does. And then, you know, once all of that's kind of out then there's kind of that space for maybe just like a smile or a pause or those moments where mm. something feels a little bit more in that moment. Mm. But, you know, transition aside, I just, that information's always going to be a little bit shaky for me to get from someone. I'm always going to be thrown off just a little bit. I'm going to blush. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, giggle i'm gonna lose speech capacity for a minute like you know i just i typically don't know what to do with it mm -hmm. that's fair coop yes i, coop. I think coop, I, I just smacked you with the talking dick and handed it to i you. i totally <laughs> uh question angles also mm -hmm. um mostly because it feels like it's it's less likely to just be a ploy to get me into bed mm -hmm. um, because there doesn't much exist the female variant on pickup artists. It's sort of a different thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've had the experience where somebody tells me I'm fucking hot and I look behind myself to see if there's someone... <laughs> back there and and people are talking through me again because that's happened you know i i do blame an awful lot on this uh, of this on uh, a girl in high school who pretended to like me mm. and then at the end of several months of um shit i was asked why did you ever think i liked you in the first place so I blame her because it's easier to blame someone. I've gotten much better at taking compliments without overthinking them. And 
I've gotten more to the point of not needing them as much. Um, which is interesting. I'm sort of thinking my way through this as I go, so bear with me. <laughs> I love it. You know, one of the, one of the reasons um, this topic came up is because the question of being making oneself attractive for someone else or wanting to be more attractive for someone else or wanting to do something because someone else will be attracted uh, has has come up a number of times in circles recently, and it's always been a a curiously difficult thing to answer. Like, is it okay to alter something because someone finds it attractive? And that can be something as simple as um, a playmate really likes red hair, so you're going to dye your hair red because you know they really like it. And because, yeah, you are you could go either way. So it doesn't really put you out at all, you know? Um, hmm. I got some shit online for talking about my weight loss because I used, uh, I, I said I wanted to look good naked. And apparently you're not supposed to want to change your body to look good naked. You're supposed to be happy with your body. I, oh, mm, no, okay, keep going. <laughs> Ow. It sounds like Katie has thoughts. I generally do. Um, thoughts, go. <laughs> well, no, Coop's not done. I well, it's, it's, been, it's been a difficult journey because while I'm feeling better and better about myself as I lose weight, and I have lost 50 pounds at this point, Yay. and you know look what? dramatically different, and I'm feeling really good about that. And I'm also feeling good about the fact that I'm probably not going to get diabetes as quickly and my fatty liver may become a regular liver again and my cholesterol is not going to get me on medication. So really, there's a lot of reasons I want to lose weight. And looking extra good naked at Desire... I've always looked at it as improving my curb appeal. <laughs> you know? Once they come in the house, it's awesome. Let's be honest. Yep. But they have to, you know, pull up and see the for sale sign and say, I'm interested in seeing the property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, I lost myself know, I think... in that metaphor. <laughs> Go on, Prof. No, I, I, I mean, Katie Mack was going to jump in first, so I'm going to let yes, her go Yes, I first. love that that's basically just my, my name. Yes. You you aren't the only person that does that. There's no separation of first and last name there. It's well, it's, it's one of those great Katie names, Mack. and it's easy to say. Yeah. I like it. Um, listen, I there's <laughs> there there's a lot of pushback going on surrounding diet culture and fat shaming, and I understand all of that, and that pushback is great. But then to go to the extreme of saying that anyone who is trying to or interested in losing weight is just a victim of that construct rather than making decisions about their own aesthetic yeah. is not helpful either. It's like feminism. It's like taking that extreme of saying that women shouldn't just be housewives and all of that and then taking that to say, well, if that's genuinely what you do want, then it's because you were told to. No, sometimes that's really just what you want. So whether or not you want to look good naked, I – might amend that to, you know, wanting to look more the way you want to look naked. It's not necessarily good or bad. Having more weight on you doesn't mean that you look bad naked. Having less weight on you doesn't necessarily mean that someone looks good naked either. But you want to be comfortable naked. And if losing weight is your way to become more comfortable with yourself, then fucking go for it. Like, I... Coop did something similar a few years ago, you know, hmm. like I never got to 50. I, you know, I lost 40 pounds a few years ago. Which and bravo. That's, that is so fucking wow. hard. Thank you. Well I mean, I, done. I found a couple of them back, but you Well, know. they're always lurking in the shadows. <laughs> I mean, if you don't find them, 
they'll find you. Yeah. I just, I, and I had a lot of shame surrounding when I was trying to do that too, because, mm. you know, you find out very quickly there's people who like, no, but you don't have to do this. And I'm like, well, I'm not chopping off a limb. I'm just, you know. <laughs> maybe. Don't worry. It's not, mm. it's not rever- irreversible. Yeah, exactly. But then you also have the people, oh, that's, oh, that's good. That's good that you're finally doing that. Like, oh, excuse me? Yeah. Fuck you. And seeing the span of everyone's responses to that was really interesting when I was doing that. But, you know, I also found that if people gave me shit or were made uncomfortable by my trying to eat healthier or being more active, there was probably a lot of their own latent shame that was coming out. Like, how dare you actually do something about this thing that I feel shitty about? Mm. Oh, I'll tell you. So, you know, I'm not going to speak for Prof, but Prof and I make no um, illusions about the fact that we love to work out, that we, we, we take pride in our bodies because it's your temple. Like you, you reside in this, you know, flesh and blood and, you know, muscle and, and, and it's yours to take care of. And it's not for me at all about, well, that's not true. It's, it's not for me in the forefront to think I want to do this to my body. So I look awesome. Like, sure. I want to look awesome. I'm not trying to deny that at all, but, I, but for me, and, and profs heard me say this, you're not, you don't look sexy. You experience sexy. Mm-hmm. And so for like me, that. yeah. So for me, it's not about, I need to quote unquote lose weight. It's, I want to feel awesome in my body when I'm performing in my body and performing in my body means I'm in the gym and I'm lifting a fuck ton of weight if I can help it. Or I'm walking across the pool deck on my way to lunch at desire. And I want to just feel sexy. And so I am the only one who can decide that. Like I am the only one who can decide what I want to choose to eat. And the reality is we also choose to eat in a lot. uh, we, We choose to eat in ways a lot of times that is a cultural construct in the sense of I'm going to choose to eat a certain way so I can quote unquote lose weight. If you actually look at food as fuel, and I'm not going to get too far aflung here, but if you actually look at food as fuel, you want to fuel yourself with the cleanest fuel available. And so that's just how I roll. Like I want to put things in my body. Now, granted, I I drink, you know, my fair share of tequila, but you know, (laughs) I have to balance that out with the occasional spinach salad. And that's what I'm choosing to do with my body. And so this idea that somehow we're finessing our bodies to to lose weight or diet or whatever it is for a simple aesthetic. So someone who looks at us says, I might want to have a conversation or fuck this person. That's a really superficial, superficial and shallow way yeah. to perceive how people are going about shifting and changing their, their vessel. And along with that, I mean, the mind body connection is not a, a, an artifact of culture. It is a real deal thing. And when you feed your body beautifully, when you are focused on its performance, when you are feeling whole, it shows and no one else can from the outside direct you and say, you need to be this weight or you need to be able to do these things with your body or you need to be able to enjoy these foods. It's about you. And so I really just, for everyone out there, all the swing setters who somehow are in that space of trying to move into a nutrition plan or a, a, a exercise plan or whatever it is, like, hell Yeah. You do that because you know what? It's about you and it's about you feeling sexy, not you looking sexy. And only you can decide how you feel sexy. I do want to follow that up, Jen. Yes. Because I was having this conversation today with a friend who is um, does cam modeling. And she and I experienced very similar things 
as we gained, um, well, I gained a fairly significant amount of weight and she gained some weight that she was unhappy about. And the interesting thing is as I was gaining this weight, I was becoming more and more confident because I'd been working so hard on my confidence. And I was finding that more and more people out of my, quote, league were finding me sexy because I was more confident. Which paradoxically took away a lot of my extra motivation to actually lose the weight to get healthy and to get more attractive in perception. So, Coop, so that example is, is very, very illustrative of what I was going to say, which is mm. this is really about internal versus external stimulus or motiv motivation. Mm -hmm. And it, whenever we try to do something to fit somebody else's idea of what's sexy or healthy or right, we're fucked up. It just doesn't work. It's not sustainable. But doing things for reasons that are important to you right. and having the outcome of that being weight loss, being, you know, having lower blood pressure, having lower cholesterol levels. I mean, these are very measurable things relative to your long-term health that are indisputable as it relates to the evidence of longer um, lives and, and, and less morbidity, you know, healthier lives. So it really comes down to, you know, you just can't go through the kind of experience that you've been through and say, I'm trying to do this because I want other people to think I'm sexy and I'm going to get laid more like confidence is confidence. You're right. Mm -hmm. And there are women who are from a body composition standpoint, eating all the right things and still very shapely, you know, it's not big boned, so to speak, but it's just a predisposition to having a certain kind of body type. And when those women are confident, they're extremely sexy but they also may be treating themselves in exactly the same way that Ginger mentioned in terms of, you know, really feeling their body to be healthy and to have mm -hmm. that level of energy yeah. that shows. Mm -hmm. It is telling that it didn't actually start working for me. The dieting and commitment didn't start working for me until I was doing it because I actually wanted it mm. rather than before when I was doing it because I felt that this is what a swinger should look like. So, right. Because fuck should, it doesn't exist. And you know, that's other people's expectations that we might use for some short term uh, guilt motivation but in the end, it just makes us feel shitty. And then we rebel against it. We're like, fuck that. I'm going to, yeah. you know, I'm going to do what I want to do because fuck should. And so good for you, you know, in terms of being able to, to work what in, in, in lose that kind of weight. And, you know, if there are folks that really push against that because they think you're doing it for the wrong reasons, then you know, you're not right. Yay. And I look forward to seeing you naked. Well, I'll be there. Naked. <laughs> With bells on. Hopefully 55 pounds. That's the goal at this point. He will, he, he may not have bells on, but he will have rainbow socks on. And I bow will have rainbow that. socks on. Paul, so, what more could you ask for? Well, I'm, I'm considering if I actually go through with this whole uh, dressing as Frankenfurter for a Halloween screening of Rocky Horror. I thought we talked about that. I thought yeah, I thought that. we did. We well, that was decided. The motion passed. Yeah, motion carried. Clearly, yeah. when I go through with this, that <laughs> Thank means you. I will have a costume to bring with then the week after to Mexico. We need to coordinate. <laughs> Who do you want to be from the floor show, Jen? I don't know. It's a tough question, but we can't we can't clash. No. I can't go grayscale if you're going to like <laughs> be rainbow. <laughs> no, we can't go grayscale. Sorry, it was an inadvertent Game of Thrones reference. Scoozy. 
<laughs> You'll have to go up to the islands where you become like the rocks. Exactly. Yeah. Or grayscale? down to the islands. I think the islands are down. Oh, grayscale, like the, the scabby stuff, grayscale. Okay, I get so, so no spoilers. Segwaying back to grayscale's not sexy. We're talking about things that are sexy, but we might be done doing that. I don't I th- know. I think, I think we're about to wrap up. Does anyone have any last thoughts on sexy? Cooper. Yeah. Well, That's well, thank my you. last thought. Was that your thought? Prof is <laughs> also very, really, mine. this is a very sexy podcast. <laughs> Katie's already doubting my motives. I'm well aware of your motives, Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> Not doubting a thing. <laughs> That's true. Uh, my, my subtext is often text. Yes. <laughs> Bold face. Yeah. Bold face. Exclamation point at the end. I'm, I'm sorry. I was just still thinking about the floor show. I was like, who gets to be Columbia? <laughs> I think Ginger is a magenta, personally. Oh, definitely. Yeah. My personal definitely. opinion is it's all way too many clothes for desire. That's just me. Well, the floor show is just a corset, panties, and uh, um, uh, garter belt with oh that's nope, fair that's fair <laughs> that's fair and you do not need to encourage cooper for wearing fewer clothes at desire because no I, I, he's... as much as possible i will be naked i know i have i have a, just a tiny little concern that at some point you might just shave your head because you're just going to be like there's oh, no, just don't do that. Too... no no <laughs> no then then there's a huge new area to get sunburned i know it's fair no no, you have a beautiful head of hair. I'm just saying you might, you know, your so- you could do like, you could do like athletic socks instead of the knee highs or something. Like if you needed to take your clothing level down because there's no more, there's nowhere to go. You've, you've maxed out on how many, how many clothes you can take off. That's true. At the I mean, welcome. I, unless, unless you go for a full body wax, you can't really expose much more skin. Uh, That's I'm, fair. I'm not, I'm not up for that. No, nor should you be. You're not looking to lower your wind resistance. (laughs) uh, I do. I I would like to see Cooper waxed. I mean, like, you know, 40 year old virgin style, just like. No, but you don't want to see his body waxed. You just want to see him getting waxed. Yeah, yeah. You you want the uh, the um, sadistic portion of it. Exactly. You don't actually care about bald Cooper. (laughs) Oh no. No, no, I would feel your body after you got waxed. I would. Well, you feel his body when yeah, he's yeah, not I, waxed. I, hey, I'm not doing it for you, prop. <laughs> <laughs> Proving the point of the entire podcast. Thank you. Beautifully done. <laughs> so you can like us on Facebook at <laughs> facebook.com slash the swing set. Follow us on Twitter, Cooper S. Beckett at Ginger and the Prof at that Katie Mac. The nice thing about Ginger and the Prof is you get two, two, two for one. (laughs) I couldn't do it. That's too silly even for me. It was beautiful. I know we're we're so inseparable, Ginger and the Prof. Yes, it's the end. Which is really just me following on Ginger's coattails because of being unwilling to stand on your own two feet. I I, trust me, it's so true. <laughs> Check out this podcast, daily blogs, articles, and toy reviews on our website at lifeontheswingset.com and on our site's Twitter feed at On The Swing Set. If you want to write for us, email Miko at lifeontheswingset.com and say submission. <laughs> uh, you can't actually emphasize it like that in an email subject line to just strongly imply that you said it in a sultry fashion. Email us at contactedlifeontheswingset.com. Give us a call. Leave us a voicemail. Send us a text. 573-55-SWING. That's 573-557-9464. When you're buying your condoms, you know, for swinging with, why not buy them at swingsetcondoms.com? It supports this podcast and gets you awesome condoms that, as we said recently, don't just come from Dylan's trunk. They come... (laughs) from the lucky blow which is awesome dylan's trunk condoms yeah you don't know how long they've been in there lucky blow condoms you know that they're awesome (sighs) 
Dylan's trunk is in Upper Mongolia at the moment <laughs> with those condoms. So with they the take a super long time to get there if you ordered them from Dylan's trunk at lifeontheswingset.com. And I would recommend you thaw them before you actually try to apply them. <laughs> they, they actually come in cube form. <laughs> You can support us by buying a shirt, leaving us a tip, or visit our Patreon at lifeontheswingset.com slash support. You can find other great podcasts like The Gentle Pervert Social Club, The Kinky Geeks, Eat the Rudecast, a damn good podcast about Twin Peaks, Sex at a Go-Go, the Tell Me Something Good podcast, and that one we talked about for a long time at the beginning that you already know about, Intellectual Forefront, at swingset.fm. Or on our free Android app. If you have an Android phone, download the app. There's absolutely no spyware on it, I promise. I sounded very defensive about that. Mm -hmm. Really, I'm just asking, if you have an Android phone, why do you not have the app? It's so convenient. Anyway. (laughs) Jin, did you want to read the last part again? Oh my gosh! Yes! <laughs> hey now. I'm sorry. I, I just... know how to make Jin get turned on. Oh my gosh. Apparently, it's by asking her to plug me. <laughs> <laughs> Though I think I knew that. Wow. <laughs> oh, that was masterful. <laughs> So you can buy Cooper's Beckett's book. <laughs> no, if you're going to say Cooper's, Cooper's Beckett, Beckett's, you have to say it with a Sean Connery I accent. I can't. And, and that's there what I want to hear. more than one Cooper Beckett. Is right it Cooper's now Beckett's? is Ginger's Sean Connery accent. I, I, I refuse, but I'd oh. love to... But I'd love to hear you do it because I, it was just, I was just teasing you so you would do it because I miss Cooper's it when you don't. Beckett. One more Cooper's time. Beckett. Yes. Yes. You can buy my life on the swing set. <laughs> so you can buy his life on the swing set book. Adventures my life on swinging the swinging and polyamory. That's Cooper? the one. Adventures yes. in swinging and polyamory. As an ebook, paperback, audiobook, all of the above. You want it all because it's amazing. At life, my life. It's not life on the swing set. It's my life on the swing set. Dot com. You want. <laughs> his book in you all of its forms. All. What I want is for him to do another weekly podcast by himself where he just reads erotica in that voice. I know! Hey, Katie, you yeah. get me some, like, two-page erotica, <laughs> I will I will send, I will create a Cooper Beckett as Sean Connery reads erotica. For I you. Wanna, I want to have the over-under on how long it takes till Sean Connery actually get like gets this on his radar screen and he somehow and then calls... he reads and then he reads erotica as cooper beckett <laughs> wow <laughs> yes yeah wow. and then the that universe awesome. just collapses in i know we can't we can't we can't <laughs> because there can be only one. one that's right <laughs> not sean and connery but I cooper mean, beckett if, if sean connery is not your thing i will also read erotica in a minnesotan accent which the Minnesotans have asked me to stop saying is a Minnesotan accent. Is it not? No, it's a Fargo accent. It's a Fargo the movie accent. Okay, so accent. it's a, it's a, de- it's a Deco- Dakotan accent. Yeah. Also a little bit of the oh. UP, I've noticed. <laughs> upper upper uh, Wisconsin as well. Okay. Though Wisconsin sort of trends towards that extreme Chicago accent. You know, when you say Wisconsin. Right. And you're going to get some sausages up uh, up on Lake Michigan. Yeah, some (laughs) sausages. Absolutely. So uh, if people have erotica that they have the rights to, I suppose, I'll put it on the podcast. (laughs) I'm not sure how that works. Somebody contact Rose Carraway. (laughs) Oh, boy. Thanks for swinging by. Have a sexy business? Love the Swing Set? Let's put these two great things together. The Swing Set Network has advertising and sponsorship packages available for our websites and podcasts. Email advertising at lifeontheswingset.com for more information. Thanks. (laughs) 
I am going to write homoerotic oh. erotica. Homoerotica. 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 Homoerotica actually makes sense. Can, that I will grant you the rights to oh. read as Sean Connery. I, I would yes, love homo. to hear Prof's homoerotic erotica. <laughs> and it will be I, a dialogue between Cooper Beckett and Prof. Oh, this is so meta. It is. <laughs> Isn't it, though? Yeah, I think the listeners it. would enjoy that very much. It's done. You need to go another level, though. So, like, it's Katie Mack. You're writing about Katie Mack writing homoerotic erotica. As Katie Mack in the about narrative fashion. About Prof and Coop. Of, about, yeah. Of Prof and Coop. Yeah. Ooh. Or you write about Ginger reading Katie Mack's homoerotic erotica about Prof and me, and I read that story as Sean Connery. <laughs> and then can somebody write the story of Sean Connery listening to Cooper <laughs> read the story of Ginger reading the story that I wrote about Cooper and Prof? Yes. And then we could write the story about the people who stopped listening 20 no, no, minutes no, ago. No, 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 <laughs> to be fair, about- to be, To be fair, I almost... I almost, I don't really feel this way, but almost feel like we just need to stop the podcast ever right now because what just happened was so amazing. It, there's, it's such a mic drop. You can't we, even. We have I'm now out on top. made it impossible to ever do better. Right. Poor Dylan's going to have to find out about this as he uh, tra- traverses. The, um, oh, you know what? Audio. He's actually with Sean Connery <laughs> <laughs> right now. This is the best digression that has ever happened in the middle. He's talking about Katie Mack. Yeah, no, you got to start with Ginger. Yeah. Charlie Kaufman can uh, write the movie about this story. Yes, he can. It won't actually listener, be the story. The whole thing will just be us talking about the story. That It'll listener who last week said uh, he will shed a tear when the podcast ends, <laughs> time to start crying. That's right. All right. Good I'm, night. I'm Thanks for swinging by. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am so sorry, Katie Mac. I, this, I'm really not usually like this. I'm not this disruptive. I, kind no, of no, no, no. No, don't be... I'm disruptive, and I, I mean, it's it's not true. I'm I'm really an easy person to get to know and like. So I gave away all your secrets before you even arrived. I said you were gonna get here from dinner, liquored up, and that you were like had a hard on to to flirt with the Katie Mac, that Katie Mac, not the Katie Mac, because that's different. That Katie Mac. And still there. That is what I was hoping would happen. And it did. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm back. Can you guys hear me? Did you have to did you invite me back, or did I lose? Did the? I love Skype. If you really, if you don't finish. I'm Tina Horn, author of Love Not Given Lightly and host of the Why Are People Into That podcast, and you're listening to a Swingset podcast at swingset.fm. <laughs>